Hi, I'm Loli, and I'm so glad you are here. Let's start our first project with this wood round that I found at Dollar Tree. We're going to go ahead and remove that cord, and I'm going to cover it with two coats of this white paint. Once it was nice and dry, I'm going to go ahead and take this napkin that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to go ahead and unfold it, make put it nice and flat against the board. I'm going to take a piece of parchment paper and we are going to iron out those wrinkles. Then we're going to remove that off the board and I'm going to take some Mod Podge and completely cover the front surface of the wood round. Then I'm going to just go ahead and set it aside and let it dry. Meanwhile, I'm going to use one of these rings that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to remove that tag and paint it with one coat of this maize color from Waverly. But it was not covering very well, so I painted it white. And then I'm going to come in with that maize color from Waverly and paint it one more time. But it was not quite the same color as the napkin that I was trying to add to this design. So I came in with that yellow from Dollar Tree. And this is the perfect color to match the napkin. Now I'm going to go ahead and adhere it to the board, but I'm going to remove that second layer of paper. And here I'm making sure to center everything so the pulp of the fruit is centered and I have equal parts of the white. Then I'm positioning some of that parchment paper and I'm using my heat press to go ahead and reactivate the Mod Podge, adhering the napkin to the wood round. Now, using a file, I'm going to go ahead and remove the excess paper from all the edges. In this step, I'm making sure to go only in the downward motion to avoid any tearing of the napkin. Now, nice and easy, lemon squeezy, <laughs> pun intended. Look how cute that's turning out. So, I'm going to just take a skewer and go ahead and punch out the holes that it would wrong hand. And this is what it's looking like so far. Now I'm going to take that cord that came with the wood round. I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue to the edge and I'm going to just turn it around a couple of times to create a nice stiff edge so I'm able to easily thread these beads to the hanger. I'm using these beads that came from a package during Easter and I'm using one yellow, one green and one white and then I'm going to go ahead and tie this right back into my wood round making sure to keep the knot towards the top and then once I knot that piece I'm going to go ahead and thread the edge or the tail into the bead to avoid having to cut it and making this look nice and seamless. As I'm attaching the other end of the cord I'm making sure not to make it too tight so I have a nice play between the beads so I'm able to move them freely but I'm also making sure that that knot is close to the board and I add a little bit of hot glue to the end of the jute board and tuck it right into the bead so it will be nice and seamless. Now it's time to attach the circle that we painted before. I'm going to use a combination of gel super glue and hot glue to do that. And I'm going to make sure that this round is nice and centered so I have the most equal amount of white in the borders of the orange. Now I'm going to embellish it with these picks that I got from Dollar Tree last year. I'm just going to remove the tags and I'm going to curve the stems as you see right there and then attach it to the top section of the wood round using some hot glue. Now I'm taking some of this ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm going to create a double loop bow. As you see there, I'm just zigzagging the ribbon in opposite directions until I end up with two loops on each side and a tail on each side as well. Then I'm going to just go ahead and scrunch it up in the middle and I'm going to use a piece of the beaded garland that I got from Dollar Tree to tie the bow into place. Then I took some of these polka dotted ribbon from Dollar Tree and I did the same thing with the two loops. And I was going to scrunch it in the middle and add it on top of the green bow and use the same piece of beaded garland to tie it in place. And I'm going to use the remainder of the beaded garland as tails to this bow. The one side of the beaded garland had only one little pit berries on there so I'm just going to go ahead and trim off 
the excess off of one side and I'm going to use one of the beads that are at the end there and I'm going to attach it to the other side of the bead of garland using some hot glue and I'm just wrapping some of the tape over it as well. It just adds some symmetry to the bow. Now that I'm happy with the bow, I'm going to go ahead and just add some hot glue to the back and attach it at the center of the two picks. And I forgot to dovetail my ends, so I'm going to go ahead and dovetail the ends of each one at the ribbons, as you see right here. I'm just going to go ahead and fold it in half and cut the triangle upwards, and I repeated this with all four of the tails of my bow. And I was missing a little something something, so I'm going to take this package of words from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to go ahead and use some gel super glue and some hot glue and attach the word welcome from this package to the middle of my wood round. And now we are done. Let me know what you think in the comments. My friends, so this video is part of the Summer Fruits Opening by Challenge that is hosted monthly by Brenda from Rustic and Lace DIYs and by Amanda from Six Kids and a Glue Gun. The links to their channels and to the playlist will be linked in the description box below and also pinned in the comments. Make sure that you head over to their channels and to the playlist and show everyone some love. Alright, for the next inspiration, I'm going to use this cotton board that I got during the fall season at Dollar Tree. And I decided to remove that little bow from there. And for some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to put my hand in front of that. Don't do that. I burn myself, as you can tell. Then I remove the excess glue that was remaining using my spatula. We're going to remove that cord from the top and I'm going to paint that circle using some white chalk paint. And I decided to paint the whole thing eventually. Then I'm going to take that yellow color, maize color from Waverly and I'm going to go ahead and paint the outside section of the cotton board. And then I decided it was a little bit too bland so I'm coming in with this brighter yellow from Dollar Tree and I'm just doing two coats of it on top of that yellow and look how much brighter it is. Then I'm going to make it dry and add some Mod Podge to that white, white, that white portion <laughs> of the cotton board and I'm going to let it dry. While that is drying, I'm going to take some of these napkins that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to go ahead and unfold it and I was disappointed. I was hoping that the whole thing was that solid blue square there so here when we plan b and i'm using some um, water on a small paintbrush to go ahead and outline all the little flowers and lemons that i would like to add to the center here and i just find that this is the easiest way to have like you know an irregular border and it's a little bit easier for you to do decoupage this way because the edges are a little bit less noticeable when it's not like a straight line if I just want to just fussy cut it. So once I knew exactly where I wanted to put it, I'm just going to be playing with the placement right there. And I'm going to remove some of those blue edges because I wanted everything to be nice and rounded. And so it would look very natural on that circle. So once I remove the excess little pieces of white, also the napkin had, adding again a little bit of water on the edges using a small paintbrush. I'm going to add that paper or that napkin right there to the edge of my cotton board. Then I'm just gonna take this parchment paper and I'm going to place it on top of the napkin, making sure that it's exactly in the position that I want desire it to be attached to this. So they are making sure that everything is symmetrical, that everything folds exactly where I want it. I'm just going to place that and hold it in place to make sure it doesn't move. And then I'm coming in with my heat press and pressing that down. And what this does is that it activates that mud push that I added to that circle prior to, and it fuses everything together. But here, since I had mud push in the entire surface, my parchment paper attached to that surface. I wasn't happy about that, but hey, what are you going to do? So here I'm just using a emery board to remove that excess paper on the edges to make it look more complete or more uh, symmetrical or you know like it belongs there pretty much is what I mean to say and then I'm just going to use 
a little bit more of that water with the um, paintbrush and remove a different portion of the napkin. And then here, there were some areas in which the paper was a little bit more noticeable than I wanted. So what I'm doing is using another, you know, again, taking the wet brush and trying to clean up those areas. So I have, you know, the best seamless transition between the surface of the cotton board and the napkin. So here I'm just going to attach the, I want to detach the second portion or the second paper of the napkin. And here I just want to make sure that that edge, it tore up a little bit. So I'm making sure that it fits correctly. And then once I placed it, everything down where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing I did with the previous piece. And I'm just going to go ahead and iron it as best as I can, trying to remove all those little, these like little bumps that the napkin also has on the edges. So I'm making sure to smooth those out as well. And then I'm taking once again my emery board and carefully um, sanding off the edges of the napkin to reveal a nice clean edge. And this is turning out so cute so far. So now we need to embellish this a little bit. So I'm coming in with um, some more um, paint in a small brush, white paint, and touching off any areas in which the Mod Podge lift up and left like discoloration. So I'm just making sure that's nice and clean. And once that dried, I went ahead and covered the entire surface with Mod Podge once again to go ahead and protect that napkin. Now here you can see how I'm adding some greenery, these little ends and pieces that I had from other DIYs. And then I made a little bow and attached it right there where they all united. But I'm not done yet. <laughs> it looks cute, but I'm not done yet. I need a little bit more. So I decided to take some of that jute cord that came with the cotton board and went to add a combination of two green beads and one yellow bead just to give it a little accent at the top. And I knotted the jute cord in one little loop at the top and then threaded the rest of the beads and then left the other piece at the end there and done. And we are going to tie it right back into the hole where it was before. Once I did a double knot, I'm going to tuck that end right into the beads above it. So go ahead and have a nice clean ending thing. And I'm still not done yet. <laughs> I thought there was a little bland, so I was like, oh, let's see what we're going to do. I don't know. So I decided to take some of this blue chalk paint and add it to the edges. And it's turning out so cute, but I'm still not done. I'm going to take this home sign that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm going to glue it to the center using some hot glue. And that's all she wrote. Let me know what you think of this one. For the next inspiration today, I will be using one of these little houses from Dollar Tree. I'm going to remove that little garland that it came with. I was being very careful not to burn those leaves. They were coming apart as I was using the heat, so I just yanked them off and then just added the heat to the glue and scrape it off using a spat spatula and then here using the same spatula after I'm heating up the glue I'm being very careful not to break it I still managed to crack it but no problem I just you know just use a little bit of hot glue and attach it back together and it was good as new I'm going to use some of this napkin to cover this but I really felt like I needed to you know make this a little bit wider so that napkin will pop so I painted it with two coats of that white apple barrel paint then i'm going to cut off actually no then i'm going to mud podge the entire house with it so i'm able to attach my napkins so that's what i did once that was drying i'm cutting the piece of napkin that i'll be using to attach to the front of this little house i removed that second layer of tissue off of it and i'm doing this after the mud podge has already dried so i don't have any wrinkles from it and also making sure that I'm going far up enough that the entire front section of the house will be covered once I add my pieces of wood back to reposition my roof. Here I'm using some parchment paper and adding some heat to this to attach that napkin to that mud podge that's already added onto that wood. And I just did this until it was completely wrinkle free 
and there were no bubbles either or any of those little raised edges or something the napkins has on the edges and then using my emery board i am sanding downwards on all of the edges to remove any excess napkin now it's time to go ahead and reattach those pieces of wood to the top of my house i'm going to do that using some hot glue Then I'm taking some of this ribbon that I got from Calarina Pottery and I'm going to cut off a section that is big enough to go wrap around the back of this as well. And I'm going to add it to the center of my little house using some hot glue. I make sure to attach it to the back as well. And we are going to just create a bow and add it to the center. And this completes this beautiful DIY. Don't forget to let me know what you think about this one. I lie. <laughs> I didn't like the roof and the brown color. So I came back in with some of this apple barrel white paint. And I painted the roof. And that's all she wrote for this one. Don't forget to let me know what do you think. And here we are for the final reveal. I always look forward to your comments and your feedback, so please don't forget to leave me a comment to let me know your thoughts about each one of these DIYs. I want to take a quick moment to say thank you to my subscribers for subscribing, commenting, liking, sharing. All these things help me tremendously. They help my channel grow and I appreciate you very much for them. And if you have not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe and join the Lolly Dee's Creations family. It is free and it means the world to me. My friends, as always, thank you so much for watching. Be blessed, be a blessing and craft responsibly. And if you would like to follow me on social media, here are my social media links. And don't forget to visit my friends in the playlist. If you would like to watch some more of my videos, here's a suggestion. And you are more than welcome to binge away with this playlist as well. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. You're amazing. Bye.